Okay, so if we go back to the stalled replication fork that we were um, discussing and realize that this, rep that this uh, regression of the replication fork will lead to the formation of a holiday junction, one of the ways that this uh, regressed a replication fork is going to break is in fact because of the action of these holiday junction resolvases. And it doesn't matter whether it cuts in this plane or in the other plane because in both cases there's going to be one intact DNA molecule and there's going to be one broken molecule um, and I've simply flipped this little piece of DNA here over so that you can see now that it's, uh, it's, it's oriented in the same direction. And so now essentially what's happened is that the DNA replication fork, which was coming in this direction, has reached this point, arrested, backed up, formed this regressed replication fork, and then broken at the place where this, uh, this lesion uh, had occurred um, in order uh, to, to give the cell a chance to repair this break or, or this interruption in a different way. And the different way that it is going to use is this homologous recombination mechanism known as break-induced replication. And I'm going to go through all the steps of this um, process here. So we got to the point where we have a broken uh, replication fork. That replication fork is acted upon by enzymes which chew away one of the two strands of, of the DNA Almost in all the physiological cases we know about, it is the five prime ended strand which is chewed away by a, a series of enzymes known as exonucleases. And the purpose of this is to generate a large region of single stranded DNA which ends at the three prime end of this molecule. This turns out to be the business end for doing almost all of homologous recombination. This single strand DNA uh, molecule attracts. Um, the uh, recombinase protein, here called RecA, but RecA is the bacterial name of the RAD51 protein. So RecA or RAD51 binds to this single-stranded piece of DNA and forms a filament. This filament formed on single-stranded DNA is a just extraordinary machine which is capable of searching the entire space of the genome to find sequences which are homologous to the single-stranded piece of DNA inside the filament. And when it does find those, uh, those sequences, and here that's uh, pretty easy because these sequences are uh, immediately adjacent as these two sister chromatids are being replicated um, uh, simultaneously. This filament then engages not only the single strand of DNA but also the double strand DNA template and carries out this exchange of base pairs which I illustrated before um, in which now the single strand that is invaded is now base paired to the, uh, to the template and there's a displacement or D-loop which is created which, which is, is the beginning of a recombination event. And here in break-induced replication this little strand invasion allows time for the whole DNA replication apparatus to be assembled so that now um, you can start to have both leading and lagging strand DNA polymerization and one has taken what was a broken uh, DNA molecule which was, was, was the product of stalled replication fork and reinitiated replication so that now replication can continue uh, in, in simple organisms, it can go all the way to the end of a, of a relatively short, meaning hundreds of thousands of base pairs chromosome. In big cells, we imagine that this occurs and then that replication fork simply meets us another replication fork as would normally happen so that the whole molecule um, can be replicated. 